If you're broke because your kids robbed you blind for Christmas and you need some extra cash, you need to tune into these picks against the spread. Welcome fans to our week 14 pick show. I'm your host Jim Sella. I'm in studio with the famous Johnny Parlay, our senior baseball analyst Jay Dash, and our senior college analyst Big Easy. How you guys doing tonight? Let's talk sports. Hey, uh, thank you guys for coming on the spread today, fans. You, you got any questions for us? You can hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Like us on Facebook and check out that YouTube channel. Get it? Call me Mister Five and O from this point. Mister Five and O, you did go five and O last week. So let's make it ten and O. <laughs> Jim, you went two and three last week. You Brutal. were tw- twenty five and thirty three overall. JP, like you said, you you went five and O last week. You're twenty two, twenty and one now. Believe it. 22 20 and oh, 1. I, I will concede first place to you for that one, uh, Johnny Parlay. Just three wins behind you, so you can shut up about it. And yeah, not after this week. I'm 19 and 15 overall, and easy is 6 and 5. Yeah, everyone laughed last week with my, my Tampa Bay pick, but who's laughing at the, uh, at the register when you go cash your checks? John, you are actually 11 1 and 1 in your last 13 picks. Or it could be 12 and 0 if Jim would give me that extra half a point, which he ain't succeeding. There'll be no sliding on that one, buddy. A loss and a push is a loss and a push. I, I am 12 and 6 in my last 18 picks. Hey, now. Pretty beat. No, nothing to show for it, though, except for W's. I'm just giving the fans money. I don't need money. <laughs> what was Easy's pick of the week in college last week? Uh, that was Mississippi State minus two and a half, correct? He, he was all over that. Yeah. He Mississippi went from a uh, stack to two stacks to three stacks. Yeah, he's now two and one in college. costing me a stack. No, I'm down a half stack. No, I believe it. He was hot on that. See, people, you can't you can't always be feeling the hot pick. That's why you got to go to Tampa Bay sometimes. <laughs> but like me, Johnny probably sticks his neck out for you guys all the time. I said, take the Rams. Who's going to bet on the Rams? You could have watched half the first quarter – called it at night you could have just took your dogs for a walk came back and seen that score that's easy money baby we we'll to do it for you again this week what's the first game james hey dash is on that what do we got going first dash we got baltimore at miami miami is minus three and the over under is 45 and a half well baltimore is five and three against the spread versus miami since 1992 Miami is four and four straight up against baltimore since 92 and five of those eight games have gone under under, that's a bit surprising. What do you think, Parlay? Yeah, I don't believe that. Maybe check the record on that. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I don't think anything's gone under in the last 10 years. Well, in the last three seasons, Baltimore's 1-0 and against the spread and straight up, and that game went over. So not, not a whole lot of stats to go by between these two teams. I'd be surprised to see this one go over, but what can I say? Last night there were zero points in the first quarter, and from that point forward I think they are about 66 or 68. I don't even know. It was too many to count, but... Over under is sort of bunk. No one really wants to know what your opinion on that is. Pick a team, you know. Well, you look at Miami and they're seven five against the spread this year, and the bookmakers love to make it equal out. So seven and six would definitely help that trend. But I'm feeling Miami this week. Seven and two on a grass field. There's something we can point out, right? <laughs> That's impressive. What's the other stuff even made of? What is that, like rubber grass? That rubber weird grass? synthetic, it's like fake grass, and then they have little rubber pellets on the well, field to I'm try a, to help give you some grip. I haven't kept track of that, their record on the rubber pellet On the field. rubber pellets. But 7-2 and two on the grass, they're at home. I got to I gotta feel it. Their favorite, 4-2 and two is a favorite this year. Keep it up. I'm going Miami. You know, this is a tough call. Baltimore and Miami are both good teams. They're both in the playoff hunt. Uh, you know, Easy took Baltimore last week against San Diego, and he got beat up a little bit on that pick. That was robbed, though. That was highway robbery. That was a brutal game. The Ravens are also seven and five against the spread in all their games. They're one and two as an underdog, one and two as a road dog at three points or less. Uh, they actually are even at three and three. It's just a straight up road dog against the spread. Like I said, it's a tough call. You got Joe Flacco, quarterback for the for the Ravens. You got Tannehill, quarterback for Miami. Neither one really sticks out much to me. Flacco just has a giant unibrow, and Tannehill looks like Andre the Giant lost 600 pounds. I think Tannehill's been the better quarterback this season, and the Baltimore cannot stop the pass. I like Mike Wallace, and I like 
Jarvis Landry. I think Miami's going to get it done on the offensive side. And Miami has a pretty decent defense, too, and I don't trust Joe Flacco at all. Easy. This game has huge playoff implications for the Steelers, with Baltimore and Miami both being ahead, and I think they both may own one or two tiebreakers against us. So who do you think is going to win this game? Well, it's simple. Ravens are a playoff caliber team. They won the Super Bowl a couple years back. Miami, they're weak. They haven't even made the playoffs. It's crunch time. Team's got to win. They know it. It's Baltimore all the way. You like Baltimore? Miami ain't ready. Well, Dash, who do you like? You said Miami? Yeah, I'm going to go with Miami. John, you like Miami? I like Miami. Three is tough. I mean, it may be a two or one point game. It could even be a push. Can you bet on the push? You can, can pick can the, I push. Bet on the push. If you want to take that, go you ahead. Go man. Push, Good luck with that. Not yeah. doing that. The odds on that should be you get three free wins if you call yeah. the push. But I don't got the I don't got the uh, marbles to do that. I'm I don't know. I'm just feeling Miami. I really like the way they've been playing lately. They've been they've been playing like straight up hardcore D, and I think that's what wins championships is D. Miami being at home, uh, only three points. It, it's closer to me for Miami. This game really could go either way. I wouldn't be surprised if I was wrong and Baltimore won. I wouldn't I don't be think surprised we, either. Yeah, none of us would be surprised if you're wrong, man. Both you can shut up. Uh, Miami, Power chair. Miami, <laughs> Miami just being at home. That That's why I like them. Minus three, a field goal is a push at the worst. So I'd have to go with Miami too. Spread solo pick, Baltimore, whatever. Hey, it worked for me last week, so that may be the way to go. You may be on your way to a 5-0 and week. Well, let's move on to Easy's pick of the week. Easy is 2-3 and three in picks of the week, though he is 2-1 and one in college picks. But this is Tampa Bay at Detroit. Detroit is minus 10, and the over-under is 41.5. In the last three seasons, Tampa Bay is amazingly 1-0 against the spread and 1-0 straight up against Detroit. That game went under. I don't really know what the over-under was, but uh, it's surprising to see any game that Detroit 100, was involved 108, 108. in. <laughs> yeah, go we'll under in the last couple years. Point. Tampa Bay is not a very good team this year where they have two wins, one of them coming against Pittsburgh, a heartbreaking loss for us at the end. Detroit's been playing some solid D this year, so I don't know. Th- this is a tough call, but... Minus 10, that's a big line. Hey, 4-2 and two on the road, ATS for the Bucs. Got to like that stat. 4-2 against the spread on the road for the Bucs. That's right, they're road dogs. They don't, no one shows up for their home game, so they like to play in front of crowds, I guess. There's probably, just been, perform. probably been some big lines, too, for the home team since Tampa's been so bad record-wise, so that, that makes sense. Tampa, they got a lot going for them, though. That Mike Evans, he's the real deal. Oh, he's a beast. I'm telling you, they're going to turn it around. They looked good last week. I called them last week. Austin when they're... Safarian Jenkins. That's right. So, spell that. You got to spell that too. ASJ. ASJ all day. Well, and they're going to. You got me on Tampa. They're going to perform ATS this Sunday. No doubt about that. I thought you were going to say ATM. Minus 10 is <laughs> a big line yeah, for Detroit. Check out the ATM for your ATS picks. Detroit hasn't scored a lot of points this year. Yeah, they did put up a, a lot on Thanksgiving, but outside of that, they I think they didn't put up 30 since week one until last week. They're the truth. I told you Hoyer was the truth. I told you the Rams were the truth. Now I'm telling you the Bucks are the truth. The Rams would be anybody's the truth against Oakland, though, John. Come on. Right. Then John pick- hated on me for taking a favorite like Green Bay or the Colts, and then he picks a team playing the yeah. worst team in the league. So You're how that, is that any no, different? But I do agree with you, though. The Rams are solid. They, they got people that can get to the quarterback. And, I mean, if their offense can score, cool. Jim well, Sala back- is that guy who buys the Cowboys hat. The I would never buy Yankees a Cowboys hat, hat, and I'm Yankees, not a Yankee fan. Yankees, Cowboys, Duke. He has a yeah, Duke. Duke hoodie. He has a Duke hoodie. <laughs> I don't even like college sports, so you guys are way off base. Let's get back to this game we got going on here. Let's get focused. The yeah. Detroit Lions are six and six against the spread in games this year. They're four and four against the spread as a favorite. They're four and two against the spread at home, and they're four and four against conference opponents. So it's a crapshoot when it comes to Detroit against the spread. Like Dash said earlier, they're not scoring a lot of points this year. They are giving up a lot less points than they usually do. At one point, they were leading the league in points against. Uh, They're only giving up 17.2 points per game, but they're only scoring 19.2 points per game. So, And only three games for Detroit has gone over this whole year. Gotta Three games that. for the Detroit Lions gone over. Gotta love that, but guess With what? With Megatron and Reggie Bush and Joyke Bell and Golden Tate and Matt Stafford and Pettigrew and Ebron, you think this team would be putting up huge points. 
this is the week they're going to get it done. This is the week Detroit starts putting up points like they're supposed to. Stafford to Johnson for two or three touchdowns. I'm going with Detroit, even though it's a big line. Well, unlike the Steelers, who always play terrible teams terribly, the Bucks are 3-1 and one against teams with a winning record. So that means they come, they show up every time against the good teams, and they're going to show up against the 8-4 and four Lions, and I'm going to with Tampa again this week. Back Ooh. to back. Give me that 10. Are you kidding? Ooh. 10 points? Give me that 10. Give, me, right. give me 6. I'll take it. All right. Tampa Bay's defense has actually been playing pretty well recently. And like you said, Detroit just hasn't been scoring a lot of points. I just think Mike Evans or Vincent Jackson got to come up with a couple plays just to stay within 10 points here, and I think they will. If, as long as Tampa scores two touchdowns, I'd say they're going to stay within this 10 points and they're going to cover. Easy. Who do you think has the better record against the spread in the last four weeks of the regular season over the last three years, Detroit or Tampa? Against the spread, Tampa. Tampa's 2-6, and six, Detroit's 1-7. and seven. I don't know, let's not forget that Detroit, they've been sad. I mean, it's not like they're the best team ever. Yeah, right Stafford now. hasn't been playing well. I mean, I'm not even talking about St- before Stafford even got there. They're, they're well, before sad. Stafford, they were terrible for a who long time. Who was the time. guy that yeah, stepped they, out of the back of the end zone? Calvin Johnson made him the beast. The quarterback? Dan Orlo- Orzlo- yeah. Orlowski, I can't <laughs> say his name. Danny O. Daniel. To the Danimal. I don't the even Danimal. know why I picked Tampa anyway. I just I looked at I seen ten points and I got real all crazy. All right, because so you easy. know that Johnny Parley picked it. That's why he picked it. Well, you got me. You got me on Tampa and I seen ten points, so I got crazy. Uh, whatever. Easy's on am? Tampa. Dash, who'd you take? I also took Tampa. Dash is on Tampa. I'm on Detroit and Johnny Parley, Mister Five and O of the week, Tampa Bay. And I want to point out so Parley. Spread so when low. I go five and O, you hate on me. When you go five and O, I support you. What's up with that? Hey man, roll with the winners. <laughs> Spread solo. All right, let's move on to. I'm gonna go to my pick of the week. Let's go to Dash's pick of the week. All right, my pick of the week. I'm four and one in picks of the week. I did lose last week. I'm looking to get back on track here. I got New York Giants at Tennessee. Tennessee is plus one, and the over under is forty six and a half. Seems a little too good to be true. I think minus one. But I seem- guess they're judging that on the way the Giants have played all season. But come on, Eli. They've been so how, bad all year. It's they're just like us. They have a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Why aren't they better? He's sad this year. Eli Absolutely has been playing sad. terrible. He had a terrible year last year. He had a career high in interceptions last year, and he's on not on pace, but he's on pace to have another really, really bad year. You never hear any rumor about getting rid of him or dumping him or benching him or anything. Who's yeah. his backup? Well, <laughs> you know, the New York media is all on Tom Dean Coughlin's Orlowski. back right now. <laughs> It is it? No. no. Well, <laughs> I was going to say. They look B-A-A-A-A-D bad this year. Well, the easy. Giants just don't look it. Sorry. Sorry, Johnny Parley. Yeah. Easy. In four games since 1992 against Tennessee and New York, who do you think has the better record? Four games. To New York. No. Tennessee is 3-1 and one against the spread and straight up with three of those games staying under. That is very hard to believe. And there hasn't yeah. been any games between the two – in the last three years, so I can't really give you any recent trends with the players. Well, I'm going to stick a post-it note up there for Jay Dash to check that because I find that hard to believe that Giants have dropped that many to them. Well, that's at Tennessee, so it's a little bit more understandable if it's you know at Tennessee than at home. Still don't believe it. This is a Tennessee Titan. Since 1992, man, that's like a... They have good... They have, that's a long time. To this day, they have one of the best uniforms in the NFL. With the Titans? Yeah. You like this? I like the Houston they, Oilers better. Uh, Oilers, they should wear them like a throwback every once in a while. That would probably drum up a ton of business for them. But what I still, I, I like the current Titan uniforms. I like the colors. And I don't it's think just, the Houston Texans would appreciate it. Well, as they say on that ESPN uh, you show, wear a what, freaking uh, helmet with a oil that, thing on. Does that show the numbers don't lie? Is that what it's numbers called? Numbers never mm-hmm. lie. Well, numbers. I hopefully lie this week because I took the Giants, and against the spread, their numbers are not looking good. In fact, they don't have a winning record in hardly, I don't think, a single category yeah. against the spread as far as I can see. Yeah, 1-5 and five in road games. 4-8 and eight against the spread this year. Look at Tennessee's, though. 3-8-1. and one. Yeah, it's not much better. better. You got the Giants 3-9 and nine for the year, Tennessee's 2-10. and ten. Uh, Against the spread, the Giants are 4-8, and eight. Tennessee's 3-8-1. and one. 
eight of the Giants games have gone over and six Tennessee games have gone over, so I think that may be a safe bet for us. Well, this is going to be an ugly game. I'm surprised it's obviously not televised, right? Both teams give up over 25 points a game. That's crazy to see two teams giving up that many points. Well, not when you have two terrible offenses. It's probably not the case. Well, the Titans, they've bounced around with quarterbacks this year. They've kind of settled on Zach Mettenberger right now. Uh, Tennessee is 3-8 and eight against the spread, as I said. They're 3-6 and six against the spread as the underdog. 1-3 uh, and three against the spread in home games. Not a lot here to tell you really to pick them either. You know, just as, as Parlay said with the Giants, they got nothing over 500. None of these trends. The only trend that I like is Jay Dash's pick of the week trend. I think it's 4-1, and one, right? Correct. So I'll stick with that trend, and this is his pick of the week. He's going Giants, so I'm going Giants. In the last three years, what do you think Tennessee's record is against the spread as an underdog? How many games? 29. I will go 15 and 14. Close. What do you think, Easy? Uh, 10 and 6. It's not 29 games, but okay. <laughs> The record is 11 and 18 in 29 games the last over the course of the last 3 years as an underdog. No, I think that says 10 and 6. Check the record. Check the record. 10 and 6 easily adds up to 29. In the last 16 though. That's the question. I don't have that stat, but I mean if Easy has it, that's more power to him. Well, hey, move along. Next time you ask a question, ask the next within a 16 game range. Are we have yeah. another yeah. spread solo or is this a spread sweep? Why? Who took Tennessee? Nobody. I'm jumping on the Giants, too. Tennessee's a terrible team this year. They can't stop anybody against the run. Rashard Jennings is going to run all over Tennessee. They can get to the quarterback, though. Yeah, they can. But as long as New York runs the football and and plays efficient offense, they don't need Eli to win this game. It's not like Mettenberger's going to go out and put up huge points against them. Uh, The Giants' defense isn't terrible this year. I don't know. The problem to me with Tennessee is their offense right now, especially with Justin Hunter going down. 17.8 points a game. Justin Hunter was their number two receiver. He's done for the season. Kendall Wright's their number one. He's questionable. So it might actually end up Nate Washington being their number one, number one receiver. And they're going to have to get it done in the passing game because their running game has been garbage all year with Bishop Kapasanke. 19-14 Giants. All right, Johnny Parlay's pick of the week. He is three and zero in his last three picks of the week. He is six and five overall. I've really turned it on lately. I've really started to, you know, focus. Earlier, I was just screwing around, not really caring, but now I'm focused. You're on in fire the zone. right now. Straight up on fire, banging it out. And here comes another pick of the week. But I'd like to hear what you guys have to say before I make my pick on this game. Well, we got KC at Arizona. Arizona is plus one, and the over under is forty. It's a low over-under. Yeah, you rarely see it one point away from the 30s. Isn't that... That's insanity. I haven't seen a 30 in a while. That's aggressively low. Two good defenses, two terrible offenses. These teams haven't played each other over the last three years. Uh, They've only played each other three times since 1992, so uh, some of these stats that we're going to give you really don't account much to the players on the field right now. They account nothing. Arizona's two and one against the spread versus KC since ninety two. KC's two and one straight up against Arizona since ninety two. And two of those games went under. Again, considering Irrelevant. yeah, Numbers half of these lie. guys that were shows. not even alive or barely even alive at that time. That show is bunk. You want to listen to a real show? You listen to the spread. Numbers never lie, please. I don't think Arizona's going to be able to stop Jamal. It's, you know, it's going to be tough. Arizona that. with Drew Stanton is a different team than Arizona with Carson Palmer. Uh, Kansas City this year is 2-2 two and two as a favorite against the spread. They're actually 4-2 and two against the spread in road games. They're a good team. They run the ball well. They play good defense. Houston, the linebacker for Kansas City, is near the top of the league in sacks, if not leading the league. Uh, Tom Ali is always a good player coming at the quarterback. You know, Easy said Jamal Charles is beast mode. Their wide receivers haven't been doing anything. Nothing. But Alex Smith is still efficient with the ball. He doesn't really turn it over very much. Andy Reid's got a good offense for that team, and he's got a good football mind. They're going to have a solid game plan. You know that. Right. Kansas City always comes prepared. They just got Donny Avery back, too, which is a little bit Donny Avery. Is he related to Donny Ayers? Steve Avery. I highly doubt it. I'm telling you, everything's pointing towards Arizona in this game. They got a lot of very... Friendly, helper Impressive. friendly stats. And Arizona. Eight and four against the spread. Super Bowl pick. Five and two as a dog. 
too. It's crazy to me that they're five and two as a dog when they were at one point nine and one and leading the league in victories, but they've had seven games where they were the underdog. Well, and they're five and one at home. I mean, everything points towards Arizona, so that is why my pick of the week is not going to be Arizona. Instead of that, I will go with KC. I'm feeling it. I think Arizona is bound to fall apart. I just looks like they look a little shaky here lately, and I think. This is just going to be a quite another nail in the coffin. I think they're about to just blow up. Another I'm injury. KC. They suffered another injury in the backfield with Toron Matthews' thumb. He's all messed up. He's out for like three or four weeks, so that hurts. Give me KC. Pick it a week. Ever since Carson Palmer went down uh, with the ACL injury, they haven't really been putting up points like they could. Uh, Fitz is hurt this week and may not play. They're only averaging 21.5 points per game. Ellington's out. Yeah, Ellington's out. Ellington's out. Matthew's out. Yeah, no way. It's KC. Yeah, Stanton's really struggled. That was a good pick of the week. Uh, Kansas City, you know, P-O-W. when you have a better quarterback, you generally can win a game. <laughs> Alex Smith is definitely a better quarterback than Drew Stanton. Even though KC's on the road, I'm going to have to go with Kansas City. Drew Stanton has been a bad quarterback recently, but he does play better at home. And it showed this year. And Arizona has a really good run defense. So if they can find a way to stop Jamal Charles without putting eight, nine men in the box, I think they can hold KC to a low total and win this game. Well, I guess we'll find out at the end of the game, right? And I am taking Arizona. Arizona at home, huh? Arizona at home. spread solo. Next is the final game. Let's go to our final game this week. Dash, who do we got? We have your pick of the week. You were seven and five overall in picks of the week, but you were seven and three in your last ten. Alrighty then. We got Colts at Browns. The Browns are plus three, and the over under is forty nine and a half. And before we get started, go ahead parlay and hate on me for taking the Colts. Of course, why not? Take the Colts. You always do, right? Right. You don't why, stick your neck out there. <laughs> why take teams that are going to lose? Since ninety two, these teams have only played each other four times. Uh, Indy's 2-1-1 one, one against the spread in those games. They're 4-0 straight up, and two of those games have gone over. I actually read a stat earlier today that said no game has gone over 45 points in December at Cleveland since, like, 1978. That's a crazy stat. Nothing over 45 points in December since 78. Johnny Manziel's going to come in the game and blow up for 50 points himself. That would be sweet. The Colts are 9-3 and three against the spread this year. They're 8-4 and four straight up. They're putting up 31.8 points per game and only allowing 23.6. Nine of their games have gone over. They're 4-1 and one in road games against the spread, and they're 8-3 and three against the spread as a favorite. So all signs are pointing to the Colts. And this seems like a tricky line to me. I don't know, only three points? When Indy came into Pittsburgh, we thought Indy was going to blow them out. And it, they just didn't look good on the road, especially defensively. Yeah. It's true. It Cle- was a rough game for the Colts. Cleveland, 4-2 and two is an underdog. That's the only thing sticking out to me. Yeah, they're pretty even everywhere else. Yeah, they're 3-3 three and three against the spread in home games. Uh, they're 4-4 four and four against the spread against conference opponents. 2-1 and one against the spread when playing against a team with a winning record. So that's really the only thing that's over 500 for them. Oh, you can search wide and far. I don't see you're, think you're going to find too many people Oh, wait, 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 wait. When playing against a team with a winning record in the second half of the season, they're one and one. Oh, there, so you, there go. you go, digging Dang. deep. <laughs> they're gonna improve deep that into to the stat two and bucket. one, possibly. <laughs> but outside of the Ohio tri-state area, I don't think you're finding too many people that are on that Cleveland bandwagon for this game. But like I said, this is probably one of those trap games. I'd probably steer clear of it if I was in Vegas and I had some money to burn. But seeing that I'm in Pennsylvania and not anywhere near Vegas. I I'll wish I was in it. Vegas. It's burn warm there. Cash. Let's burn that paycheck on Indy, right? Why not? All day. Especially it's three. If you get into some teaser action, you can actually make Indy a favorite. You really think they're going to lose this game? Not Are you all. high? Not at all. Indy, baby. I got to go to the Colts. H- high on Heron. High go on, Indy. High on Daniel Heron. Spread, yeah. spread, spread sweep. sweep here again for this game. I'm taking the Colts. Easy's on the Colts. Dash, you're on the Colts, and Johnny Parlay, even though he hates on me for taking the Colts, it's the Colts. Easy. Any college pops? College pops. Lost last week, but we believe in you, man. What is it? We're going to go with the Big Ten Championship game, Ohio State. There it is, Ohio State. Do you know the line? Do not. It don't matter. 
The line never matters. The line never matters against the spread. You hear that, folks? <laughs> to Ohio State. Well, that wraps up our Week 14 Pick Show. Thanks, guys, for coming in studio. Thank you, fans, for listening. Uh, hit us up on Twitter if any questions you got. Bet underscore the spread. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. Hope we can help you have a Merry Christmas.